there isn't a lot of exploration around it. They don't have a lot of, uh, you know, ship boats to go to different areas. So we try to be their eyes and ears in different places. So last year, right after, uh, for the trip after the GUE trip, we went to the Waddell Sea, which nobody had ever dove in that part of the Waddell Sea before. And um, in by the end of the trip, we had found what we think, we don't know, but we think, just might be two new species. So this is one of them. Uh, this is some kind of a pelagic hydroid. It was found in three meters of water, about the size of uh, about three meters or three centimeters around um, uh, diameter. And nobody knows what it is. So anybody in that world, and you have, know anybody in that world who didn't works with this stuff, please, I'd be happy to share the images with you to see if we can get a better idea of what it is. It reminds somebody, everybody of something that is seen in Japan, but it's much bigger and has a slightly different morphology, so we're trying to get some samples the next time we go down there. This is a hydromedusa that we also found in the same area, a uh, different dive site, but the same general area, and we're hoping the, to be able to identify this as well. This was much bigger, this is about 10 centimeters long, um, and it was about uh, and it was in about six or seven meters of water. So, we're hopefully it's two new species in one trip. So that was pretty uh, potentially new species in one trip, which is pretty exciting. The um, other thing we're going to be working on when we go down there uh, next time is we're going to be. Exp they've asked us to start doing some work around this shipwreck that you guys all dove on last time. Uh, they, I showed them a lot of the, we, this particular trip we were on with, with GUE, they actually got to dive the wreck twice, uh, two dives in a row, which had never been allowed before. <laughs> and uh, we managed to talk them into it. That was a good job. I don't know who did it. I think it was you that did that, Sergio. <laughs> and, uh, and managed to convince them to do that. And uh, we got some, because he did two dives back to back, people got, knew a little bit about the wreck and therefore got some really nice shots, uh, including some areas of a lot of the life that was under the wreck. So we were when I showed these to some of the scientists nearby uh, that work at Palmer Station, which is not too far away, uh, they asked us to keep, they said, would you please add this to your list to go to every year? Because they want us to document the growth on the wreck. Because they, this was thought to be a wreck that really didn't have any life on it. And we were able to show them quite to the contrary, you know, with some of the pictures. And uh, so this is an old factory ship from the whaling days, actually. So it was pretty exciting to be, that they wanted to do that. The other thing they've, um, we've started talking with them about is doing some more work in different parts of Deception Island. This is another site that was from the GUE, uh, photo from the GUE trip. The Deception Island is a volcanic crater. It's collapsed and there's a, you know, it's open water inside. And the water is a little warmer because of that. So they're wondering if maybe Deception Island might be, might tell them something about what life in Antarctica might be a few years from now. Right, so they're kind of interested in looking at that. They're also interested, and in what they're afraid of is maybe there might be some sea star wasting disease that they've seen in Deception Island, and that's something else that they're asking us to keep a very close eye out for. Um, we didn't see that on this trip, but there were some people that had indicated that might be something they were afraid of, and so it's something we're going to be working on for that. And that's something I appreciate the folks from GWE sharing those images so that we could you know, get, uh, show these to the scientists. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, the other thing that people go there to Antarctica want to see besides ice is everybody wants to see leopard seals, right? And uh, leopard seals are the top predator there, just like the polar bears are the top predator uh, in the Arctic. Uh, we were very fortunate to get uh, some feeding behavior late in the season um, this year, this last year. This was in March. Um, and man, this, this guy was uh, extremely cooperative. Really didn't care that we were there because all they cared about was the penguin, you know. And uh, the, peng the way they kill the penguin is they grab the penguin by the feet and then they do this. Psh, 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 on the surface, smashing it on the surface and basically breaking the penguin apart. And it's pretty brutal, man. It, it is pretty brutal to watch, you know. But, uh, but they are not, you know, this is kind of, you see in the predator mode, they are trying to hunt um, and do a lot of hunting before the weather gets, the ice freezes over. Usually they're not quite that bad. <laughs> okay, they're not quite that aggressive. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of images of that. Um, but Antarctica is going to be our, uh, next year in Antarctica is going to be the first time uh, that we're doing a 100% citizen science project trip. So the whole next year we're going to be doing an entire ship, 100 people on the ship, 
all doing different projects with different scientists um, in different in all these places. So we're trying to do that at every expand that and do that in the Arctic as well. We'll be doing some of that. We have a couple of scientists coming with us in the Arctic uh, with in the GUE trip for that as well. And we're going to be gradually doing more of that in each of the polar places we go to, because we're starting to go to places that most of the scientists haven't been, and they want to get some data. We're going to be doing some phytoplankton, plankton toes with non-divers. Uh, snorkelers are going to help with zooplankton collection in the shallows. And divers are going to be doing benthic surveys, you know, along, tr along transects on the bottom. So it's pretty exciting stuff uh, to do that with the scientists. And maybe in the, while you're swimming along, you might have one of these come by. Okay, this is uh, our gal. Oh, yeah. Remember that they are, they are very solitary animals, so uh, they are, if they see their reflection in the dome port, they get a little nervous, you know, <laughs> about, uh, because they think it's another leopard seal. Um, but, uh, get an idea of the size now. And so a pretty amazing moment to have something like that happen, you know? So when all of these comes, as happens, the goal is to change people, okay? The goal is to get people to go have some personal development and some personal insight into what's important to them and in life. Make them ask more questions. You know, I always go, I go on every trip I go on, every place I go to, I'm like, well, why is it like that? Why is that happening this way? And that's what we want to get people to do. And not just me, but everybody. We want people involved in asking questions. And that's going to lead to new opportunities and new ideas. You know, and, uh, and this is a, it's going to grow very organically that way. And we're going to lead to that personal engagement is going to lead to greater involvement and greater caring about the environment. And those are all key things here. So why do we do all this? Hopefully we're going to support, how can you do all this? Is support destinations and resorts and have that have marine protected areas and are doing what they can to minimize their impact on the environment. And, and make their environment a better place. We want to create new opportunities for people to have research and education, and we're hopefully doing that in a lot of places, not just the polar, play, uh, polar environments. And we're going to use it to raise money. If last year was a fundraiser, earlier this year we raised uh, $20,000 for GUE, you know, so that, uh, and, and the program we're doing next year, GUE is going to be one of the benefits, beneficiaries of that, as well as the Arctic program. So hopefully raise at least that much money next year, if not more, you know, for, uh, for next gen scholars and, and to support other the, that next generation coming up you know because that's the thing that's important to me and I think that's the same thing that's important to Jared because we want to inspire people to be different and to change because see we can't we're, uh, we're too old you know we got to get these young people to do it for us you know we may have screwed it up but we're gonna have to get them to fix it but, uh, but I'm sorry about that but <laughs> you know it is unfortunately the way it is so I want to thank all of our photographers for the for helping and for participating me use these images in this presentation and I'll be happy to take any questions or comments thank you